Today I'm doing some secure erasing. Now I've done that before and I covered that in an article uh, well, a while ago. But you'll see this system is rather versatile where on a super micro super server, ZND mini tower, you can jam a lot of drives in there. Now today I've got a combination of NVMe drives and 2.5 inch drives that I'll be uh, nuking all at once. So I do have this old video, I don't have anything showing an NVMe drive, those are all SATA devices. So I'm using a newer version of Parted Magic Secure Erase. Now to get started, if you have a bundle, um, or your machine is in UEFI BIOS mode, which is how the bundles are shipped, that's good for VMware or Hyper-V or modern OSs. Not so good though, because we're about to boot an old ISO. Well, you know what, I'm gonna leave it alone now since I'm using a later version of Parted Magic. Maybe they've got it working with UEFI support, so we'll see how it goes. Next step would be, we're gonna mount Oh, uh, whoops, sorry. C drive. Mount the ISO. Looks like it's April 26th, so not terribly new, but that's what I bought and licensed. Can't remember the price off the top of my head, but uh, it used to be free, not anymore. All right, discard changes. I didn't make any changes in my bias, just gonna reboot. So now I need to be pay careful attention. Oops, interesting. Okay, I'm forcing a reboot now. Don't really want to boot off of VMware there. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I have several data stores. I'm ready to evacuate them. There's some expired license keys and uh, VMFS data store, and I might be trying vSphere 6.5 beta. So I also had vSAN drives, which are actually hard to clean up. So Secure Race is a nice handy way to re restore that factory fresh performance uh, for many cases, especially old SSDs. But in this case, just give me a way to nuke all partitions on drives, even if they're M.2 NVMe drives or PCIe based NVMe drives like Intel 750s. So hopefully whatever you got, you don't need to learn the brand, uh, Samsung or Intel or Care. With this boot media, the nice thing is it should be able to nuke multiple vendors products. So I hit F11 for the boot menu and <laughs> okay, another super micro problem. Let me just show you what that is quickly. Hotkey settings, uh, okay, F11, we got a remap, start. Let's call it F12 instead, stop, and assign and close. All right. So I've gotten the uh, F11 key mapping out of the way. Let me just show you here. Exit remote locations was what F11 was mapped to. That wasn't gonna help trying to get into the BIOS boot screen, so now I fixed that. So this time when the BIOS comes up, F11 is actually gonna pick the boot device. What is the boot device? It's this, do you remember we mounted an ISO? So that's gonna present a CD-ROM over the network, right? So I'm mounting an ISO on my local laptop, that is gonna look like a CD-ROM device by A10 is the brand, I believe, and that's the thing we wanna boot off of. Okay, so now I hit F11. Invoking boot menu is shown, and go to that A10 virtual CD-ROM. So now I'll find out if this 64-bit Linux boots without incident in a UEFI environment. I can wait 12 more seconds or I can just hit enter key and get going. So the boot is starting. All right, a few things to point out here while this is booting. One, you'll often get locked devices. What does it mean? Well, do you remember that little picture I showed you where I've got the machine kind of naked here? I didn't bother with caddies. I was just trying to mass wipe a bunch of drives. Some of them were actually borrowed. So, it was handy because while the machine's powered on and this Linux is booted, you can pull it out of the SATA and plug it back in. So this is a hot swap caddy. And these drives are so lightweight, they didn't even need caddies for support there. Just shove them in the um, SATA uh, connector. That's with the back plane. How about up here, a drive that's kind of screwed in place in a mounting plate? Well, you can just pull out uh, power, just like a laptop would happen. 
remove the signal cable. Actually, removing the SATA cable, I believe, works uh, also. And um, a little harder on something like a Samsung 950, this PCI device you're seeing here, where you wouldn't want to hot swap that. Uh, but I didn't need to. Um, I believe I was able to wipe that fine. It didn't show up as a lock device. That was borrowed. So this picture's kind of old, and it shows parted magic sticking out the front on a USB key. Today, we're doing it over the wire. Uh, you can still do it that way just fine, uh, either way. Same effect, you end up with a, a Linux booted here. It is actually a little faster when it's booted off of local USB. All right, hopefully we'll have this operating system here sort shortly, and we do. Don't really care too much about time zone. Don't care too much about Ethernet either. All right, so now we have our parted magic. Raised disk is all I really need. Notice the NVMe button. Nice. Well, I want to make sure this video covers NVMe because I've already done a video about ATA. So I'm going to dive right into that. And there we go. We got a Samsung and another Samsung, a 950 Pro consumer, and then an OEM product, 128 gig in size. So let's see how we do with these. These are M.2, gumstick form factor, laying down on the motherboard. So hopefully these don't show as locked and they happily just gleefully let themselves be nuked. Here's the moment of truth. Nice. All right, so it's that easy to secure race NVMe drives, especially at this time of uh, the product release cycle. Samsung hasn't released full Windows 10 supports for their uh, utilities, their Samsung Magician, which is kind of annoying. So again, having a bootable media that we just mount an ISO and boot my super server to and turn it into a easy nuking test pad, it's pretty handy. All right, let's do another erase disk. How about ATA or SATA? Okay, we have a Samsung 850, and I've got a Micron here. Fine. Okay, now it didn't say the drives are locked. If it did, you can click the sleep button and try to make the system go to sleep. But notice it says it is not supported this particular machine. That's why I was telling you about it. if you encounter the sleep button being needed, you would simply eject the drives and then shove them back in. Now, I'm going to confess. Uh, I've got some data on there that I don't really need to wipe. So I'm not going to finish this video with a, an actual erase here. But you click that button and as you saw, it takes all of 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Time to clean up, right? So, how are you going to do that? You don't really need to gracefully shut this down. But if it makes you feel better, you can click log out. And you get that option to power down. The other thing you want to do is go to virtual storage. Plug out. That kind of means eject. Sort of in a... Sort of English. <laughs> click OK. All right, we've ejected the media. And now when the machine boots and powers back on... Well, it's just a normal boot. There's no more A10 CD boot media that was booted. Just that one boot only. You didn't mess with the boot order going to the BIOS to do that. So, hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting TinkerTry.com.